Hey, this is Scott Henson, pastor of Dallas Baptist Church. I want to share a little devotional with you. And one of the things we're doing this Lent on Wednesday nights in our prayer meeting and Bible study is we're talking about some classic hymns, some of the stories behind them and some of the connections to Scripture and the stories of the cross. We're going to look today at an Isaac Watts hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. But first I want to read Scripture to you. This is John 19, 17 through 18 from the NIV. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. And there they crucified him, with him two others, one on each side, and Jesus in the middle. So we find in all the Gospels the story of Jesus being crucified. But we find in the 1700s, a fellow by the name of James Watts became a prolific hymn writer. He was born, or excuse me, not James, Isaac Watts, goodness gracious. Isaac Watts was born in 1674 and died in 1748. Now, prior to Watts and some of the trends of his time, most Protestant churches sang psalms. They sang some sort of uh, melodious or introspective version of the psalms. It wasn't really uh, psalms based off anyone's perspective. Uh, you know, of course, these modern praise songs get kind of some flack because they uh, are a little too me-centered sometimes. That's some of the criticisms I hear or... You know, it's too eye-centered, too individualistic, not communal. But we see with Watts, he wrote this uh, hymn, When I Survey the Wonders Cross, in 1707. It's a very moving and very personal expression of the gratitude for the amazing love uh, of the de uh, death of Christ on the cross. It originally appeared in his collection, Hymns and Spiritual Songs. It was originally entitled, Crucifixion to the World by the Cross of Christ. In fact, uh, theologian Matthew Arnold calls it one of the greatest hymns ever written in the English language. Um, like I said, it was a little controversial in its time because most Protestant churches, they sang repetitions and versions of the Psalms. They didn't have these first-person perspective so, uh, Psalms or songs or hymns about uh, things in, in going on. Let's, look, let's talk a little bit about uh, Isaac Watts. He was, a, he was a very talented individual, very smart. He learned Latin at a very young age, Latin at five, supposedly Greek at age nine, French at age 11, Hebrew at age 12. I tell you, I'm an underachiever. I can speak redneck fluently, and that's about it. But he grew up um, uninspired by the hymns of the, or songs of the English churches, the Protestant churches, especially of his day. He said, he once commented, the singing of God's praise is the part of worship most closely related to heaven. But his performance among us is the worst on earth. So a lot of these, he wrote a lot of these personal type hymns. In fact, he wrote over 600 hymns, and some call him the father uh, of English hymnody. Uh, and very, very triumphant, very beautiful psalms or songs he wrote. Let me read some of the words to I, when I survey the wondrous cross. Very, very rich. The language is vivid. When I survey the wondrous cross. On which, on which the Prince of Glory died. My richest gain I count but loss and pour contempt on all my pride. Beautiful. It's rich. Rich language. Well, in fact, it even has the word rich in there, doesn't it? Um, and it goes on to say, um, Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ uh, my God. All vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice to his blood. Very, very individualistic, very personal, very reflective. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet, or thorns compose such rich a crown? Again, very vivid description of Jesus. Very contemplative. Where the whole world, whole realm of nature mine, that were present far too small, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. Mine. Notice, notice the pronouns in this hymn. It's not we, it's not us, it's I and mine. It's about me. Now, around the age of Isaac Watts, there was a very much an emphasis on the individualism, the rationalistic uh, individual, individual of the day. Uh, less the communal, more the individual. I, me. Um, and people, most people don't realize that uh, the, the individualism of the, the post-rational society 
or the rationalism of the Enlightenment uh, has influenced us so. We're very individualistic in our society today. We don't think so much of the we as we do the I and the me. Um, in fact, churches, a lot of times we think about the individual sinner, Baptist churches especially, the individual sinner uh, coming to the Lord to make a personal decision for Jesus. So Isaac Watts in his day, in his time, emphasized that individualism. And that's not, that's not dissimilar from what we see in the Scripture. There's, there's the communal aspect to the, the we and the us. Uh, we are sinners. And the communal laments that we find in the Psalms. And the individual laments as, to, as well. And the personal confession and, and the group confession. But think about this individually. When I survey the wondrous cross. Not what grandma says when she sees the cross. Not what my neighbor says when he sees the cross. When I survey the wondrous cross. When you think about what Jesus did for you, what do you think about? What, what comes to mind? Do you even care? Do you even think about it? Do you feel guilt? Do you feel conviction? Because he was up there for you. He was up there for me. When, when you survey the wondrous cross, does the Holy Spirit get a hold of you and say, man, this guy suffered a criminal's death for me because I'm a sinner, because I'm imperfect, because my relationship with God has been strained by my actions, by my thoughts, by my feelings. When you survey the wondrous cross, what reaction do you have? We find in Scripture, in Romans, chapter 5, verses 6 through 8, you see at the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates His love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus died for you and me. He gave His life so that we could have a right relationship with God. The bridge has been mended. Fences have been torn down. We can come to God because He's made it right. When you survey the wondrous cross, what do you see? What do you feel?